Okay, so I saw monsters on the cover. Who doesn't like monsters? Who doesn't like scary movies? So I got it. I hope you got got to see monsters. Um, it's pretty good. So let's dive in. Welcome back to Long Box Diving, where we explore comics and story arcs pulled from the Long Box. Now, we're going to be reviewing uh, Gotham City Monsters. And if you like the monster genre, this might really be up your alley. Um, and to be honest, I'm not really familiar with the cast um, in the book. I'm not really familiar with the creator or the, the artist. But to be honest, the, the whole so this, this way, the, the whole review will be kind of fresh with very little preconceived notions of, you know, this guy's awesome or this guy sucks. I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it. I haven't really uh, read these characters before, or even the, the creator's work. I, not that I recognize. So now when I first saw this advertised, I saw a lot of people kind of, you know, hey, this idea looks cool, but I don't like the creator or uh, I like the creator, but the idea sucks. I So I don't know. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to try it myself because I like I have my own opinions and I'm going to form my own opinion on the book. So I'm going to try it, see what I like, it, and I'm going to let you know if I like it or not. So I went ahead and got it, I read it, and I'm going to give this review right now. I don't know that I've read anything else by Steve Orlando before. Um, I don't rec really recognize his name. I don't. I know he's done stuff, but I don't really recognize his name. And I haven't really recognized the name of the artist either. Amanke Nehulpen. Uh, I probably butchered that. I'm pretty sure I did, um, but his art's great. I'm in here, but let's go ahead and start this, and let's see what we have here. So, first, we begin a basic introduction of all the characters and the different places in the story, and we start out with a place called Monster Town. Now, apparently, Monster Town is a suburb of Gotham. Can't say I've ever seen it before, ever heard of it before. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can tell me below in the comments. If, yeah, this is a place that's been there forever. But I, I don't recognize it. Monster Town. Um, but what I did see in there, in the art, is, is really cool. Uh, you see this giant skeleton of a giant monster that's still like in the middle of the area. Almost like a Central Park. Big monster bones. Um, we see that they have an opera house. Uh, you know, aristocrat monsters. And they want to go to the opera. Uh, I guess regular monsters like to go to the opera too. I don't know. Um, and then we see a Gothic cathedral, of course, because it is Gotham. And we definitely have to have a Gothic cathedral. And the, the first mob monster that we meet, is his name is Andrew Bennett, and he is below this cathedral, and he is fighting a bunch of vampires that he calls monk vampires. And they apparently used to serve him, and now they serve somebody new, a new king, and they don't need him anymore. And he's trying to kill them, and he's like, you know, he used to be able to kill them pretty easily, and he like slams his hand right through the dude's chest and grabs his heart, roll, you know. But he doesn't die, and that kind of surprises him. And then he tries to bite the dude, and he's like, jerks back it's like the blood something's wrong with the blood and and the the vampire explains hey yeah we got the blood from our new master and our new master is more powerful than you so he, he ends up killing these vampires and he's like i'm gonna figure out what's going on so he's on the case he is off to do and find whoever this guy is so then we swap over to killer croc now if you remember killer croc was on part of suicide squad um and he he's like i'm done i've served i'm, I'm ready to settle down make some money Bane apparently is controlled the rest of Gotham, so I'm going to go ahead and settle down in Monster Town and make my living here. And he talks to his buddy, but it's like, hey, we'll go to, go to the opera now, and I'm just going to stay here and do my thing. Um, and so that that leaves that, and, and Pillar Croc's over in the hotel room. And then we swap back over to Frankenstein now. But we meet Frankenstein here. Now, Frankenstein is actually in a bar fighting a bull man. Not a monitor. You know, not a bull head on a human body it is a bull man it looks like a bull with human arms and legs it's just weird and he, he's fighting this dude and the bull the bull man apparently has got like this virus thing and frankenstein's got sliding up the bars like you will not infect humanity with your virus so you're you're and you know and he slams his face with a bottle and the the the, the bull man's fighting back and they're about and the art in this book is really good i liked it i liked it a lot and you can see here um how expressive that uh, Frankenstein's eyes are. And it kind of goes on the eyes. I like these shots. You can see the expression. He's still monsterish, but he still has a very expressive eyes. This is very cool. I like that. Then he takes his lighter and he throws it on the bullman and lights him on fire. And we see him like crawl away, flames shooting up off of him. 
yeah, yeah. And then Frankenstein sits down to finish his drink. He just lit a dude on fire, and now he's going to sit down to finish his whiskey. That's cold. Frankenstein's, well, he is dead. He, does, he doesn't, he's not warm blood. But yeah, uh, he's, co he's cold blooded, man. Literally. So Frankenstein then notices there's some, the blood, there's some blood on the bar, and he goes to touch it, and he kind of shies away from his fingers. And he realizes that that's not how blood reacts, and he recognizes it in some way. So he leaves the bar, and he's heading, and we see this mandrill in the background, kind of watching the bar, and Frankenstein heads out. We then cut over to Orca. Now, Orca is like a anthropomorphic, human-shaped, but killer well shaped being. And she is messing with some runners for Bane, and they're running stuff across the, the Gotham Sound over to, to deliver things to Bane, and she is doing her part to help protect and make the world better. And she says specifically for her nephew to make it a safer place for her nephew, and I like that, because this just gives me a good character motivation, something I can relate to, the reason why she's going to be doing what she does. And I can understand that, being a father, I understand I have kids that I want to protect, a wife I want to protect, and I understand that motivation of doing what you have to do to keep them safe. And and I like that. That's really good. And then we see Lady Clay. Now, Lady Clay is another one that I really don't have a lot of knowledge about. She looks a lot like she has power of Clayface, able to change form, but she's got wings. And she f flings some wings out, uh, and the feathers fly off, etc. Now, it seems like Orlando is actually referencing the Leviathan event, which I think is something that's going on in D.C., Something to do with Bendis. I don't really know. I haven't really kept up with that. It didn't honestly didn't interest me that much. But she's talking about how Shade was taken and gone, and this and that, and things are happening in her life again. Character motivation. Um, she's things change. Things change in all our lives, and that causes changes in our life to to now move us in a different direction. Another character motivation that I can actually understand and get behind because it makes sense to me. And so this this feather goes off and becomes a person, and that person is going to the opera. Then we see Frankenstein. Now Frankenstein is fighting the, this a mandrill. Now I don't, know, I don't know if it's the same mandrill that's watching him, or if it's a new mandrill. But he is beating the same. Now, now honestly, when I when I first saw this, I thought it was a bad bone. I'm not very up on my monkey species, but it's a mandrill, I believe, which is also a monkey of some sort, like a bad bone. I don't. know. He's fighting this thing. He said, "Hey, your master, I left him here to be devoured by by the mantis mares, mares, mantis mares." I don't know what that is. Is that something that happens in Frankenstein's book? I, I mean, it sounds cool, but I'm not. I don't know if I've ever actually heard of these things before. So it seems like there's some lore here that they're in the background that I, I don't know about. But in Orlando's re re referencing it somewhere. So, but Mandrill says, "Hey, yeah, my master didn't die here. He's actually going to make his comeback, and he's making his comeback at the opera." Now Frankie takes out his gun and bah, right in the dude's face. But, well, the mandrill's face. And it's really the cool, the, the art here is really fantastic. And the, the gun actually has like little wings on the firing pin. Uh, it's very cool. Now we go back to Andrew. Now, Frankenstein then goes to the, the opera. And he's standing there looking at the opera. It's okay. And he says, I'm waiting for Melmoth to show himself. Now, apparently that's the main bad guy's name. I don't know Melmoth. I've not heard of this before. If you have, please leave a note. Like, let me know where, where is this dude from. Um, but the bad dude he, he is Melmoth. I want, it does tell me where he's from, or, or a little bit in there, but I don't, I'm not going to spoil that for you. So if you've heard of this before, please please just let me know. Because it kind of says a little bit about this stuff, but it doesn't really explain what this dude is or where he's from or how he relates to Frankenstein. Then we see Andrew shows up. Now Andrew's telling Frankenstein, hey, it looks like we're looking for the same dude. Here's what happened with the vampires. I bit, the, I bit it, and I tasted the blood. Now, Andrew actually recognized where the blood comes from, but he, I'm not going to spoil that for you. And Frankenstein just cuts Andrew in half. Just he says, "You've tasted the blood. No one that tastes the blood should live. The blood of Malmoth taints everything." Yikes! Yikes! Can you imagine being Frankenstein's bud? I mean, being friends with Frankenstein. And you say the wrong thing, and Frankenstein just <laughs> gone, cut in half. All right. Um, so we see him actually pulling himself together. So this won't stop me. But it was a great, a great panel. Then the mandrill is like using this poison, this cauldron, and these little sparks are coming up off of it, and they're floating out into the crowd. 
um, and they're landing on people. Oh, everybody's ah, ooh, in and on. Ah, they, they think it's part of the show. They think a magician or something's up there, and everything's great. And then we see this Mandrel snap his fingers like that, and everybody like it says it breaks their soul. Hundred something people just soul right in there, like drooling out of the side of their mouth. Their heads all cocked like this. Ooh, boy. And here's the bad part. Lady Clay's feather thing was there. Orca's nephew was there. And Killer Croc's friend was there. Yikes. Because, I mean, again, character motivation. These guys now have a reason to be involved in this thing. There's a motivation. There's a reason why they're doing what they're doing. I like that in a story. I want to... It helps me relate. And I would be that way because if somebody killed my nephew or killed my kid or my friend, buddy... Mm -mm. And so I understand that, 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 I understand that motivation and just, you know, I like it. I want to be, I want to read that because I can relate to that. So I flash back to the last panel and they see the cauldron and out comes this weird, weird dude, like a red suit with, looks like a, 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 a Pinocchio type wooden fate with a little carving of a circle in there. He looks ball, he looks freaky and all the mandrills are behind him. I'm like, dude. All right, so there's lots of things I didn't want to actually point out exactly because I didn't want to spoil it, but I wanted to give you my thoughts so far and kind of overview what the story's about, maybe interest you in buying it yourself. Because so far, recommend. I like it. Um, I like the setup. I like the groundwork. I like introducing the characters and let me know what their motivations are, why are they going to be involved in this, what kind of people are they. I like the monsters. Um, I like the art. The art was great. The art, I haven't, like I said, I, don't recognize, I haven't recognized, I didn't recognize his name. But the art was very good, very expressive, very, lots of action, lots of blood. Yes, lots of blood, beating hearts, the whole nine yards, everything's in it. It's just crazy. So I do recommend this book uh, so far, and I will be getting the next one myself because I want to know where the story is going to go. And again, it's only like six issues, so it shouldn't cost too much to get all of it, well, like 30 bucks. Um, but maybe it's worth it. It sounds good so far. So if you like this review, please like and subscribe. And we will see you here next time in the lockbox. box.